Your love reaches out to me. Your grace has made a way to you. Made a way to you. Your word lives inside of me. Your truth is life to all who hear. Life to all who hear. And we live for you. We live your truth. Come on, sing it out. May your kingdom come and your will be done. As we serve your heart, we serve your
let your presence sweep through this place tonight, God. Let's sing. You came to set the captives free. You came to bring us liberty. My sin and my rejection met your blood and my acceptance. Now I'm alive to bring you praise. Come on, bring your praise tonight. me to win. My pain and my oppression met your blood and my acceptance. Now I'm alive to bring you praise.
Let's welcome the Lord tonight. We welcome you.
tongue confess Jesus Christ the hope of man my hope is in you God I am steadfast I will not be moved and I'll make good never shake
I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender. here tonight. Come on. Come on. Lift his praises up. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Unto him we lift our hands. Come on, all over this auditorium. Unto him we lift our hands. Unto you, Lord. Everything we have is because of you. Everything we are is because of you. Everything we will ever be is because of you. In you I live, in you I move, in you I have my life. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on, let's sing off the page right now. Just sing in the spirit. If you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost, just go ahead and begin to sing out a new song unto the Lord tonight. Go ahead.
Hallelujah. We want to linger with you, Lord. Want to stay with you. Want to stay with you. Want to stay with you. chapter 1, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. <laughs> I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard a trumpet behind me in a loud voice saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, and Sardis, and Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. In the midst of the seven lampstands, one, like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his feet and girded about his chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were as fine as brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was like the sun, shining in its strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, and he said, Do not be afraid. I am the first. I am the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys to hell and of death. Ladies and gentlemen, that is who we worship tonight. It is before his throne we stand. The one whose eyes burn like fire. The one whose countenance is like the burning of its sun in the full day. We stand before your throne, Jesus. Just as you walk in the midst of the candlesticks, Jesus, walk in the midst of these candlesticks in the earth tonight. Walk in here. Distribute your glory and your power and your grace. Spirit of God, ambush us tonight. Spirit of God, ambush us tonight. Move in this place. Greater glory. Greater glory and greater grace. In the name of Jesus. One more time with all of your hands lifted unto the Lord. Yes, 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 yes.
fruits, Lord, of this weekend. First fruits of your presence in the church, God, in our city. May this night, Lord, may this night experience saturation of your glory on every life, every friend, every child. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Grab each other, spend some time, give some hugs, give some love. It's important. Take your time. Go ahead and do it and enjoy it. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, guys. Where's that new song come from? That's probably Brian and Katie Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, good Awesome. Love you, church. Love you. So good to see you tonight. I'm not feeling any love. I said, I love you, church. Love you. So good to see you. Wow. Isn't it great to worship the King? Isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome? Isn't he wonderful? Come on, let's lift up praise one more time to the Lord. Go ahead. Come on, just one more time. Yeah. Well, we welcome you tonight. It's wonderful to see you. If, uh, if this is your very, very first time at Victory, can we just see your hand? We have a gift for you tonight if this is your very, very first time. Okay, let's give it up for all the home folk tonight here at Victory. Oh, we, we do have one in the back. Thank you, Mary. Skylar, right? Is that Skylar? It's the other brother. It's good to see you. Hey, inside that packet that we've given you, there's a gift for you. Just take a moment, fill out the slip that we gave you, and we welcome you. Father, thank you for our new friend tonight. We pray no detours, no delays in 2014 in Jesus' name. A year of favor, a year of breakthrough and increase in the name of the Lord. And Father, I just pray you just, you invade the entire Dehart family, Lord, this, this holiday season. The whole family, God. Bless them, bless them, kiss them, surprise them, hug them. Amen. Wow, what a great night. Don't you appreciate our worship team, ladies and gentlemen? Come on. I had to look this week. It is Scotty. I think the other week I turned around and it was, it was, was it Jacob? It was back there on the keys. A few more minutes, Scotty, a few more minutes. 
Hey, we want to direct your attention tonight to the weekly. If you would do that real quick, if you have your weekly, your bulletin as you've come in. There's a few things we really want to highlight tonight. Of course, we're going to be bringing Pastor Tony. We're so excited. Pastor Tony is here with us tonight. Amen. Amen. So bring the word. And, uh, of course, transitional prayers happening Tuesday night. So very important. Today was a... It was a big day for really giving honor and tribute to the legacy of Peggy Dudek. And it was a beautiful morning here at Victory. And um, so much that I could say. So much I could say. I just love Peggy so very much. This church will, will always treasure Peggy. Always. She's a gift. She was a gift to our lives. She was a gift to our body. And um, we love you, Peggy. <laughs> You know, that's allowed. We're not supposed to speak to the dead, but she's not dead. Amen. We speak to the living. Amen. We love Peggy so much. I want to give a special, just a special blessing tonight as well to Sally Kerr. Sally, we love you so very much. This has been a huge week with Peggy being one of Sally's very best friends and then also Holly her daughter going to heaven. We just want to give you honor tonight. We love you so much, Sally. Come on, let's just give her a blessing tonight. Amen. I want to direct your attention, your attention to something very, very important. It's called Christmas in the Park. Does everybody see that in your bulletins? Christmas in the Park. Um, there are a number of children in um, the Newtown area that we would like to bless this Christmas. And you will see these cards that we will begin to pass through tonight throughout the congregation. I'd like you to take some time and look at these cards, okay? And see if the Holy Spirit begins to speak to you like that's the one. That's the child I'm to support tonight. And um, their, their names, this is little Noah, he's two years old. His wish list is toy cars and gummies. That's on my list too, isn't it? Gummies? No, no. Toy cars and gummies. Come on, I love this. Folks, this isn't in Africa. This is in Newtown, Sarasota. So important. Listen, I want to encourage families just to get a hold of these tonight. And you can, after the service, you can meet up with Jessica from our Pure Fire team out at the bookstore. She'll be out there with Marcia Gaines at the Victory For You Resource Center. You can pick these cards up. We want to sponsor all of these kids. Terry, would you take these? This year, we want to sponsor all of these children and bless them with gifts this year. We're going to be gathering them and uh, making sure that the gifts go right into their hands in Newtown. We're believing for a transformation of Newtown, that the drugs, the prostitution, and the violence is going to go. Hallelujah! It's going to go in Jesus' name, up out of Newtown. There will be transformation in Newtown. Hallelujah. Did I miss something, Terry? Hold on to the card if you want it. Well, thanks, okay? Hold on to the card if you want it. Let's go ahead and begin to move those about. Excellent. Honey, is there anything else? We've got Christmas break. Go ahead. Yes, we're going to be, just as a reminder, we do take off our Tuesday nights during December for the holidays so you can spend more time with family in your homes or shopping or whatever you do need to do throughout the Christmas season. Um, and again, we just encourage you to invite families over to your home, you know, and always remember the singles or those who may not have family in the area. I encourage you to invite them over and let's be the family of God. Amen? Amen. Pure Fire Youth Bake Sale is next Saturday going on in the foyer, so make sure you bring that extra spending money to help out the youth next week. Also, our Christmas Eve service is going to be here with Restoration Fellowship. We're going to be partnering with them for our Christmas Eve service from 5 to 6 p.m. It's a candlelight service. It's only one hour, so we encourage you to come out. We'd love to see you that night. And also, just um, several people have been asking us kind of the plan and the schedule when Pastor Brian and I are going to be heading out and um, Tony's here when the whole family's going to be here. Fran will be with us next week, Pastor Fran, um, and 
next week is going to be a really special weekend, and I'm really looking forward to it. We're going to kind of mix things up a little bit, so that's all I'm going to tell you, so you'll have to come to find out. <laughs> but it's going to be good, but Pastor Fran will be here next week. The whole family will be here Christmas Eve is the plan, yeah. so um, that'll be the first night that they will be here together as a family. Looking forward to that, really are. Um, but in the weekly here, it does uh, share Saturday, January 4th is going to be our nine-year celebration of victory being birthed, and we're going to celebrate all of those years, and also that night we are going to install the faith as the lead pastor, so we want you all to be here and be a part of that, and then the following Saturday will be the Gibbs last Saturday, and um, so, of course, we want you here for that. The Gibbs. The I've Gibbs. heard of them. I like them. <laughs> I like those people. It's so, going to be a great night. Yes, it is. It is. Is that it, baby? Yep. Thanks, sweetheart. Awesome. Awesome. What our ushers come at this time? Um, if you need an offering envelope tonight, if you'd lift your hand high, we can serve you, and we appreciate it so much. Just lift your hand high so we can serve you. Excellent. You can also go to uh, victorysrq.com at any time and give. You can give your tithe. You can give your offerings. You can give to missions. You can give to our building fund. Awesome. You can go anytime, victorysrq.com and give safely and securely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I want to encourage you as well. If you'll begin to move the ministry of friendship um, booklets down each row if you would take just a moment if you'd sign in tonight so we have a record of your attendance and we know who to follow up on who to stalk amen who to call that would help us so much if you would just begin to move those down each row that would be a great great help awesome that our tithe is sacred unto the Lord. Our tithe is sacred unto the Lord. It is worship unto the Lord. Our tithe is worship. It is a sacred trust between us and our God that we honor Him and we put Him first. Amen? And I want to encourage you in your tithe. Always, always, always put the Lord first and honor Him in the tithe. I, I do not say this boastfully. I, I mean this. I don't say it boastfully or arrogantly. But my wife and I, in eight, over 18 years of marriage, we've never missed one time, one week of tithing unto the Lord. It is a sacred, sacred trust that we have with Him. It is worship. Amen? Your tithe is worship unto God. Be faithful in your tithe. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to receive this offering tonight. I thank you, Father. It is a privilege to receive the tithe and the offering and these gifts of love. Father, you know the hard work that we invest every week, every month, year in and year out, Lord, you know. But Lord, we say unto you, you are first place in our lives. And tonight, all of this seed is wrapped with our love because faith works by love. Tonight, we give with love and we give with expectation. You are El Shaddai. You are God of more than enough. So Lord, out of your riches, you shall provide every need according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord, that we are in covenant with you. Tonight again, Lord, as, as if we're holding our covenant rings of marriage, we say we are in covenant with you as we give. As we give, we are covenant-keeping people. We are covenant keepers. We honor you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ushers, go right ahead. Give with some joy. Amen. Give joyfully. Yeah, just pinch somebody in the right spot.
and just say, give with joy. Amen? Pinch him in the right mic. Pinch Sally. Just pinch her. Just get her for me. Yeah, just pinch Sally tonight. Thank you, Scotty. Everybody say, thank you, Scotty. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed, my friend. Well, it's a beautiful night in Sarasota. Amen. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I was driving down the road with Pastor Tony, and we had some Christmas music on in his truck, and he was like, yeah, right. He's looking around at 83 degree weather and everything's <laughs> lush and green. And he's like, man, I'll tell you what, this is an adjustment. And I'm like, you better believe it. And um, of course, his hometown is, is just an hour south of my hometown. And uh, Pastor Tony and I have 15 years of wonderful love and relationship um, I honor my friend. I honor this man of God and his lovely bride. My wife and I love them with all of our hearts. We truly do. We're a blessed church. We truly are. For, uh, for us, this is, an, this is an exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. It truly is. Um, because moving and shifting things at a church can be, um, well, it can just be challenging. How about that? It just can. But um, the hands that, that we are placing this church into are beautiful hands. They're anointed hands, and they're God's chosen hands. So tonight, Pastor Tony, man, I just bless you. I love you. You're my bro, but I just honor you as well, and uh, I bless you. Come on, let's welcome Pastor Tony Faith tonight. Come on. Let's just give a shout to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. It's because of you, God. Hallelujah. Woo. You may be seated. You know, none of this would be possible if it wasn't for him. We wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't even want to think where we would be. <laughs> Praise God we are, though. Amen. Amen. Praise God you chose tonight to be here. I believe God's going to do something tonight, don't you? Come on. Otherwise, we wouldn't. Why would we come? No, God's going to do. He's already done something. I was just sitting there thinking, my goodness, I think we've already had church. <laughs> you know, you got prayer at 5.30 to 6.30. You got, you know, awesome worship. He's speaking the word. I'm thinking, man, this is more than some churches do in a year. <laughs> you guys got it. You guys got it made. Hallelujah. You got it I do. I got it made. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because you know I do. Hallelujah. Because I'm his favorite, right? So are you. <laughs> hey, listen, my, my wife and, and family, they, they send their greetings. Um, it has, been, it has been great to be here, but it has been challenging because I'm, my heart is torn. I mean, they're, they're still working, and it's cold, <laughs> and I'm having fun, <laughs> and it's warm, and I call, hi, honey, how you doing? You know, acting like I'm, you know, busy or something, you know. Come on, don't tell me you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, she may be. That's, that's good. She knows. It's my wife. She knows. She knows I'm, I'm, she's loving it. But it's torn. I'm torn because they, they are doing so much still and to prepare for this transition. And uh, they're dealing with the, the cool weather. I was talking to somebody today and... and I said, I think the high today was going to be 23, and they said they've lived here all their life. They have no idea what that would be like. Let me tell you, when it's 23, every part of your body is cold. 
And you just can't get warmed up. But the truth is, they will be here soon. Amen. Do this, please. Keep us in prayer. I know that you are. But the house still needs to sell. The church building still needs to sell. And just strength for my family as they, as they prepare this transition. Um, we do have uh, a person coming to look at the house tomorrow. Amen. Like I've said to somebody, you only need one buyer, right? You don't need a bunch of buyers. You just need one buyer, the right buyer. And I believe in the name of Jesus, this one buyer is going to be the one that buys. Hallelujah. We stand in faith on that. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. We come in agreement with that. Uh, other than that, it's just, it's so good to be here. I mean, I'm telling you what, I... I have just enjoyed my time with, with Pastor Brian and, and Terry this week in the office. And, and uh, uh, I've ate a lot. <laughs> I'm going to go on a diet. <laughs> it's good. That means we're blessed, right? Come on. You're blessed, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I believe I've got a word that the God has imparted into me on the way down here. How many of you know that, that I was on my way down here last week? Uh, I was supposed to be here for the service. Praise God, I wasn't preaching. But I heard you had a great word, and I heard you had a good preacher. So you guys were set. Hallelujah. I heard you guys crossed over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You crossed over. Now what are you going to do? Come on. Now what are you going to do? You crossed over. Now Now you got something to do. Hallelujah. Yeah, possess the land. Hallelujah. Let's get into prayer before we get into the word. Father, we thank you as we come in agreement with your word. We'd ask that you would Open up our eyes to see what you want us to see tonight. Let our ears, ears be open so we can hear what you are saying. And give us hearts, Lord, that are receptive. Let us receive your word with joy and gladness. Father, and even if we've heard it before, the same word, Lord, we, we receive faith by it. We know that. So let faith arise in the people tonight, God. Let faith arise in each and every individual. In this building and on the, even on the, the sound of the uh, audio and, and through the video, Lord, let faith arise. Yes. Father, we enjoy your word. We love your word. We hunger for your word. Give us what we need tonight, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, tonight to um, Proverbs 4. This message that, that I believe the Lord was imparting to me on the way down, I believe, with all my heart, is a key to your destiny. Maybe you didn't hear me. <laughs> you have a destiny. You are destined for greatness. You are destined for things that are bigger and better than what you're doing right now. You have a plan and a purpose that's already written out by the master himself. He's written out that blueprint. Your name is on it. And he's wanting you to, to run that race. To, to follow that path. The title of my message tonight is, Stay on the Path. Your staying on the path is not only for you, but your staying on the path is a destiny for victory. Is a destiny for this church, victory at Sarasota. As I was sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm looking out at victory right now. You guys are victorious. You're more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. You've heard all of these words, but I'm telling you what, 
when it is instilled into your heart and you have an understanding of who you are and what God has called you to do and to be, you will change the world. You might not change the entire world, but you will change the world that's around you. You're world changers and you're history makers. You are. I know we say that in cliche, but I'm telling you what, you have an influence that you may not even recognize. People that you hang with, people, places that you go, where, where you socialize, where you, where you do your shopping, where you take your kids to school, you are being watched by a lost and dying world. Why? Because you have the light of Christ in you. The light illuminates, right? Where you go, light appears. People see something different. We come into this transition in agreement with your pastors, in agreement with the very fact that, that they are believing for greater things for victory at Sarasota. They always have been. Every Sunday, or I'm sorry, this is Saturday night. <laughs> I'm used to Sundays. This is so good. Tell, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I'd have to be rushing through this message right now. Because noon would come around and everybody's belly would start growling. I'm free from that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Freedom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> That's breakthrough right there, brother. <laughs> Woo! But your pastors, your elders, your leaders, this church have been believing for greater things every Saturday night, every Tuesday night. Every time you gather together, they're believing for a greater level of anointing upon your lives a greater level of, of, of glory to come into this place? I hear it. From the very first time that we came down here, years ago, the vision, the plan, the purpose, hosting His presence. These are, these are things that will change the world. But there's something we have to do. We've got to stay on the path. As I'm driving down here, some of you know that I'm pulling a 20-foot trailer. Everything's going good. The, the first night, I pull in, stop, have about a six, seven-hour drive left. I ended up in, uh, right on the, the outskirts of Macon, Georgia. Get in there that, that next morning, thinking I'll, I'll be there by 3, 4 o'clock at the latest. Man, I'll... Go take a shower and come and we'll celebrate Jesus together and have a great time. I'm going down the road. It's starting to get warmer and warmer as I go. I left the house that day before. That was uh, the day after Thanksgiving. It was like, like 20 degrees. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's just getting warmer and I'm rolling down the windows. I'm getting down the road and this little lady, I see her hand out the window. I'm like... I thought maybe she was just throwing something out the window. She's like this, flat tire. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I looked back, it looked okay. You know, when you need an exit, it doesn't seem to be there. <laughs> I mean, I'm passing exits, boom, 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 right on down. It's 10 miles. Next thing I know, by the time I'm looking back through the tires, <laughs> getting shredded. Praise God, I got it fixed. Long story, I'm not going to bore you with all the details. Get it fixed. Get it on there. Oh, man, I thought I had it going. Got that baby on there. All I had was a little wrench, my big wrench. I didn't have the connection to put on there, so I'm with a hand wrench. I'm thinking, I'm going to make it to the next exit, get my little piece that I need and tighten her up. By the time I got to that next exit, the wheel's like this. It just bore out all of the, the studs on, on and the wheel. The wheel itself got all bored out and 
started off with, with holes like that in the wheel and they were ended up like that and the lug nuts almost went right through totally. Long story short, I just started getting before the Lord and the Lord hooked me up with somebody at a, at a, uh, a tire shop. Well, South Georgia, anybody from South Georgia? I don't want to offend anybody here. <laughs> I love South Georgia. No, really. I mean, they are the kindest people. I'm telling you, they are sweet. They are nice. They are friendly. They, will, they would do anything for you. Trust me. If you want to break down, break down South Georgia. They will help you out. But the, um, <laughs> the, I guess they do siesta or something. I don't know. At noon on Saturdays, everything closes down. The parts, shops, everything like that. Everything's closed down. I, I call a guy. By the grace of God, I got a hold of him. He says, man, we're, we're closed, but, but I, I don't have any, any resources to, to fix you up. But I know a guy. He used to work for me. He's a great guy. His name's Juan. He just started a, a tire uh, company himself. He's dependable. He speaks good English. El Toro Tire. I call him up. Sure enough, Juan and his friend came and they had pink shirts on. They just got done playing flag football. They get that hub and they, they take it off and they start looking at it. Well, long story short, that process took about three and a half hours. Okay. And finally got it together. Got it going. I'm getting down the highway. I'm thinking, I, I, I can still make the service. Maybe I can get here about eight o'clock at night. You know, you guys are just now rolling, right? All of a sudden, didn't know the big game in Gainesville was going on. It was a massive sea of, of cars, lights that just never ended. I mean, it was from Gainesville to Ocala. I was doing 30 miles an hour, speeding up to 45, then slowing down to nothing. I said, all right, Lord, this must be in your plan. I'm just going to go with it. But on the way, I would see these signs, signs that would try to get you off the path and redirect you in different ways, whether it be detour, whether it be the, the, the road signs that the state puts on the highways, or the signs that, that advertisers put up. You know those signs, those signs that try to entice you, try to... to lure you in? Can I tell you what? The enemy is trying to lure the body of Christ in. Because you are victory. The enemy doesn't like victory. That's bad news to him. But we know he's already lost. He's already defeated. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're the winner. He's the loser. We don't celebrate him. We celebrate the one that's given us the victory. Amen. His name is Jesus. But the truth is, we have to stay on the path. Okay? And these things are, are directed towards us to get us off the path to where victory is going in the future. How many of you want to see victory succeed? Every one of you. How many of you want more of God? Every one of you. You know how you're going to get more of God? Staying on the path. Hallelujah. You got to stay on the path. There's a lot of paths out there. There's a lot of direction. But we want to stay on the path that God has for us. Amen. You have your Bibles, right? Turn with me to Proverbs 4. Let's start at verse 10. Hear my son and receive my sayings. And the years of your life will be many. Oh, it's already sounding good, isn't it? I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. As I was preparing this message, really all week just pondering on it, I was really thinking about you guys. This word is for you. Your path will not be hindered. It's already designed. There's a design plan that God has for you. You may only see things in part. I know how that is. But I'm going to tell you what. Trust in the Lord. And he's going to get you there. 
And he's got great things for you guys. Crossing over, you're going to take the land, and you're going to stay on the right path. Verse 12, once again. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. How do, how do we stay on a path? We follow the instruction. Amen? We follow the instructions. Verse 14, do not, do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of, the, of, of evil. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Do not travel on it, turn away from it, and pass on. Jump down to verse 18. Oh, come on now. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what mistake, what makes them stumble. Let's read verse 18 together. It's in the New King James Version. It says, here we go. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Hallelujah. In other words, that word just in the King James Version is righteous. The path of the righteous. The ones that are standing right with God. Have we ever gotten off? Yeah. I've gotten off. But praise God for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. I'm right back on it again. But you know what? I find you waste time when you get off. All those little detours on the, on the highway that takes you off that path, I'm going to tell you what, it takes up time. I heard today in the, in, in the lovely celebration of life service for Peggy, time is short. How many of you understand that? Time is short. We are about to, to embark into something that, that is a change, that is different. You guys aren't afraid because you're here. Amen? You're embracing it. I have vision. I, I can see things explode. Amen? I can see things just lift off like a rocket. I can see it where God's got you going. Listen, just think about this. We're talking about staying on the path. What, what happens when we get off the path? Well, you read it. The way of the wicked is like darkness. Just think about this. Your path, staying on the path, directly influences those around you. We already said that you're world changers and history makers. That's the severe of people that you're around all the time. You know when it's important to stay on the path? Because you've got family members that are watching you, people that, that really do love you, but the truth is, Maybe they're not serving God right now, but they're just, they're just watching. They're looking. What, what if your pastors would have gotten off the path? We wouldn't be here. We'd be somewhere else. What if I got off the path? I wouldn't be here. See how God works with this thing? It's important that we learn to stay on the path. It's, it's imperative. Can, can I read this out of the Message Bible? Proverbs 4, 11 through 15. Dear friends, take my advice. It will add years to your life. I'm writing out clear directions to wisdom way. I'm drawing a map to righteous road. I don't want you ending up in blind alleys or wasting time making wrong turns. Hold tight to good advice. Don't relax your grip. Guard it well. Your life is at stake. Don't take wicked bypass. Don't say, don't, don't so much as set foot on that road. Stay clear of it. Give it a wide berth. Make a detour and be on your way. Hallelujah. 
You know, that God's way, His path, will lead you to some places that you are going to really enjoy. They're going to lead you to Victory Lane. They're going to lead you down Healing Way. They're going to end you up in Prosperity Circle. See, that's God's path. But when we get pulled away from the very target of what God has us on, it will direct us into a, a pathway that is only disaster. I know. I talked to a brother tonight, and he said, man, you know, I, I, I'm on the path. I've been off the path. I've been there. How many know that it's better to be on the path? Be on the path that God has for us. Amen? Amen. There's something we've got to do, though, to, to be on the path. We, we've got we to listen to God. We've got to hear what God is saying to us. There's so many things in my heart that, that I feel that we could do as a body. Like I said... To Pastor Brian, I said, you know, I'm not coming in here to change anything. I'm just, I want to run. I want to run with what's going. I want to see what's happening. He'd already suggested that, that you guys give us some, some transition time, right? No? <laughs> sure see their heads, really. No. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. It's going to take a little time to gel. Amen? To, to, to feel things out. What direction? Where are we going with this thing? What, 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 what does God have for us? What, what more does God want us to do? We already know that we, we're here to claim a city. Claim a city. You know, for most people, that would be too staggering for them. They'd walk out right now. No, we can do it through Christ Jesus. Amen? We can't do it on our own. We can do it through Him. And we will in Jesus' name. Amen? We, we, can, we can take a region for Christ. We can take a state for Christ. But all of those things are, are even in that, it's going to take hearing from God. It's going to take listening to God. Because not one church is going to do this. I'm just telling you straight up. Not one church. God's already imparted that into me. I know that much. One church will not do it. It's going to take teamwork. It took 12 disciples. Hallelujah. It's going to take a team. It's going to have... It's going to... Man, I'm telling you what. One of the most challenging things is to get churches to work together. But we can do it. Through Christ. Amen. When they see that the path that God has put us on and we stay on that path as a body, just think about this. 100% of the body of victory at Sarasota is on the path running full steam ahead. Woo! No flat tires. No wobbly wheels. We'll pick up one and bring him along with us. He's a good mechanic. You'll need him. I'm telling you, God wants us to stay on the path. Proverbs 4.18, you don't have to turn there. Or I'm sorry, Proverbs 12.20, you don't have to turn there. But it says, in the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. I'm going to read that again. In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. A lot of times we think of death, obviously, as, as, as dying, being absent from the body, though we know is, is to be with the Lord. But you know what? I think they're talking about spiritual death. I think, I think the Lord's talking about spirit. I'm talking about joy. I'm talking about peace. I'm talking about operating in love. Do you understand what I'm saying? All of those things. You know, when you're, on, you're not on that path, 
You know what's the first thing that goes? Joy. I, I, know, I know when somebody's in faith and when they're not in faith. You ever seen those people? I'll ask them, hey, how, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Pastor. Doing good. Really? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Uh-uh, hanging in there. No joy. Listen, when the enemy gets your joy, boy, he can steal a lot from you. But if you're able to keep your joy through no matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening in your life, no matter what you're dealing with, I'm going to tell you what, you will stay on that path and people will be seeing you, they'll be watching you and they'll be saying, I want what they have. I want to be where they're at. I walked into the uh, apartment office that we're, we're going to get an apartment temporarily until we sell the home, and which is tomorrow, by the way. Um, and, uh, and then we're, we're going to transition down here. And this time of year is peak season. We don't have peak seasons in Illinois. <laughs> but... They have, it's peak season, so it was hard to find a seven-month lease. But, but anyway, I, I walked in the leasing uh, office, and we'd already put our application in. Praise God for Terry. He took it down there for us and before I even got here. And I walked in, and a young lady took, the, or took me into her office and um, led me to the leasing agent. Anyway, they both sat down, and, and she looks at me, and she says, what, what do you do? And I said, I'm a pastor. I'm, uh, I've been invited to come down to, uh, to lead Victory at Sarasota. And uh, she said, where's that? I said, I told her the, the address and gave her one of those cards. She goes, what, what, what kind of music you guys got? I said, man, it's awesome. It's rocking. It's alive. You know, you're going to love it. I said, look at my hair. <laughs> She's like, that's what I thought, you know. <laughs> She's like, I, well, we're looking for a new church. I'm just tired of the, the music of the church. I mean, I never ask her where she went. I don't want it. And, and she said, I'm just tired of it. And the, the kids are looking to be in a new church. I said, I gave her the car. I said, here, come. But right before that, um, the gal, before she sat down, the gal tells me, the least thing, she said, I know we're supposed to get you in on the 10th, but the truth is, we can't get you in until the 13th because of circumstances, situations. She goes, is that a bad thing? And I thought, well, it's not a good thing, but I didn't say anything. You know what I'm saying? She said, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. What am I saying? What if I would have said, you know what? That won't work for us. Uh-uh. I've got to be in here on the 10th. You, ha you put 10th on your, on your thing, I need to be here on the 10th. What, what kind of path is that? What kind of example is that for that other lady that's going to come to the church in the name of Jesus? I was expecting her here tonight. In fact, she may be here tonight. We have any, you have any new, new people in here tonight? Hope she didn't leave already. <laughs> I'm teasing. You guys need a good laugh every once in a while, don't you? Psalm 65, 11 says, You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. Whoa! Anybody like abundance? Come on. Man. We, we live in the land of abundance. Look, look, at, look at the portions they put on your plate at the restaurant. Look at, you know, we, abundance. God has blessed this country. He's blessed this nation. I have a friend from, um, you, you'll meet him. His name is Dr. Duku, Bishop Duku. He's from, from South Africa. My heart's been, been with him because I know that what they're dealing with with uh, uh, Nelson Mandela and all of the, what's going on. And they live in a little town. He, has, he pastors a church in, in Butterworth, very, very poor town. But he's, the church is rich in abundance. 
I'm telling you, it is. You'll love the way he ministers. He says, he says you know why America is abundant? Because we say, God bless America. You know why the Queen of England has abundance? Because they say, God bless the Queen. Listen, our words are powerful. They are powerful. The things that we say. Listen, to keep straight on the path, speak the things that aren't as though they are. Amen. Say the things that, that those neg that listen, negative speaking, pff, just got to go out the window. There, there's no room for that when, when you're running the path that God has for you. We're expecting blessings. We're expecting more. We're expecting things as, as, as a church, as a body, as you as individuals. How many of you have a dream? Come on. And a vision. Yeah. We want to run those out, don't we? Listen, we want to, we, listen, this thing, even in this transition, this is a journey. Our destination is heaven. Amen? This is, this is a journey we're on. Every day should be exciting. Right? Every day should be exciting. When you wake up tomorrow, you're going to say, hallelujah, I'm excited. Because God's on my side. And it's 85 degrees, and it's sunny once again. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are happy. You're joyful. You're, it is so much easier to be happy when it's warm. <laughs> I have friends in Seattle. Oh, my goodness. That ministry, boy, they got to just keep going at it and going at it. No, I'm teasing. But See... Let me just say this, though. If, if this path that we're talking about is so wonderful that God has for us, why do so many people get off it? Why do so many people get off the path? I know I, I, I had my, my bout with, with getting off the path. I'm never getting off again in Jesus' name. There ain't nothing off that path that, that, that I, I need, that I want. No, nothing, nothing will entice me. No, no billboard, no, no sound blurps. Come do this. See, that, that's how the enemy works. Come here. It's better here. Listen, the grass is not greener on the other side, let me tell you. There's just more to cut. <laughs> Truth. If there's grass on the other side, you're going to have to cut it. So how do people get off? And why do people get off? I'm going to tell you what... <laughs> Your pastor knows we, we, we had this book, it, God's Generals. Anybody else have that book, God's Generals? I mean, they're great men of God, women of God, that serve God, saw mighty wonders, signs, and, and miracles in their ministry. And then in their latter part of their years, they get off the path. Listen, none of us are exempt from getting off the path. I'm going to tell you that right now. None of us in this, in this room today are exempt from getting off the path. Anybody can get off the path. It's a choice that you make. But this day we choose to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. And proclaim His works to, to a nation, to a city, to a country. Hallelujah. You're going to the nations. Obadiah says, The pride of your heart has deceived you. How do you get off the path? Deception. Deceived. People get deceived. Have you ever been deceived? It doesn't feel good, does it? Deception's terrible. Proverbs 14.3 says, In the mouth of a fool is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise will preserve them. One of the ways that you get off the path? Pride. Pride stinks. You ever been around somebody that's prideful? I mean, it, it, it is the smelliest thing you could ever want to be around. Pride will lie to you and tell you. You know, here's what, here's what prideful people, I'm not, I'm not proud. Well, they're already lying to themselves. Listen, we all could be susceptible to pride. What keeps us humble? 
staying in the word, staying around people that will, will speak into our lives. You know, we, we, we need some, some people that will be sounding boards in our lives, right? People that will tell us the truth because they love us. You know, my, my wife will tell me some things sometimes, and I don't really want to hear them, but she tells me them because she loves me. You know? And I've been away from her for over a week. I can't remember one of those things. I, I miss you, honey. I pray you're watching right now. Pride deceives. Pride will cloud your judgment. It will cloud your judgment. Pride is one of those things that's like, why, why are they doing it? I should be doing it. You see what I'm saying? I've got as much as experience. I, I, I've, I've got as much knowledge. I've, I've had more schooling. I've done this. Why, why are they put in that position and I'm not? Listen, you know what I say when people get promotion? I'm right behind them. I'm next. Praise God for them for getting that. I'm next. Come on, anybody want to live like that? Church, you see, and you're thinking, wow, they just got a brand new building. I remember passing when we were looking for buildings for, for the well, and, and somebody get a brand new church. You know what? I love that church. I'm in line. I'm next. Hallelujah. See, we celebrate when people receive honor. Amen. We celebrate people when, they're, when, they, when they have recognition. We don't get jealous over it. Only, only a prideful person would be jealous. That will keep you off the path that God has for you. Say, that's not me. I'm not a prideful person. I'm staying on the path. Hallelujah. The path. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company. That'll keep you off the path. Hanging around the wrong folk. You know, I thought about this as I was meditating on this word. I thought, you know, that's the obvious. Hanging around the wrong people, right? We usually know that. But you know, sometimes we can be around good people and they're still not good for us maybe at that time. You know, there's a lot of good people, but you know, maybe that's not the person you need to be with at that time of your life going down the path that God has you on, heading towards your destiny. Do you understand what I'm saying? We need to hang around people with faith. We need to hang around people that will encourage us and they'll receive our encouragement. You know, the word says to encourage each other, uplift each other through songs and hymns. And You know, have you ever been with somebody where, where you're trying to give them a compliment and it's challenging for them to even receive it? That's pride. You know, Jesus said, I, I, I did nothing of, of myself, but everything that the, the Father had me do, basically paraphrasing. When, when you think that you can do it on your own, that's when you're like that. You're like, you know what? Uh, yes, that wasn't me. <laughs> no, it wasn't you. Everything that I've done with any purpose any extreme value, anything that's beyond me, it's been God. And you know when God does that, because you can say, it was not me, but it was God. Do you understand what I'm saying? We got to keep ourselves in check. Hanging around the wrong people will take you off the path. Listen, if you're around some people right now that, that you shouldn't be around, you might have to separate yourself. I don't care if it's family. Do you know what I'm saying? 
You know, I mean, it's tough. Well, you know, I'm supposed to be a witness to them. Well, if they're dragging you down, you need to back off a little bit. It's going to drag you right off that path. I love, I love my family. I love my wife's family. God bless them. I, I just, you know, we, we pray for our families all the time. But you know, the most important thing we can do for them is pray for them and stay on the path. So they see us on the path. They see us not wavering. They see us, even when they know that, that there's, there may be some struggles, some things going on in your life, they, they, they know it, but they see joy in your life. They see that, that, that zeal of purpose in your life. They have an understanding that, that you're not going to be moved because of the circumstances that are going on around you. Come on. We're not moved by circumstances, are we? No. Thank you. No, we are not moved by circumstances. Listen, if we were moved by circumstances, none of us would be here either. <laughs> Come on. Temptation. It'll take you off the path. Turn with me to the book of James. Are you getting anything out of this tonight? Listen, I, I, I'm telling you, it's, it, it's vital. It's vital. And this is probably more of a teaching than, than a preaching. But you know what? Sometimes these types of words are so vitally important through times of transition as this. Getting, a, getting that, that, that foundation on where we're going to the next level, to what, what's going to happen, to take place. Listen, we'd all just love to shove up on the doors and just go for it, right? But you know what? When you get there, what do you do? Now, you've got to have a strong foundation when you get there. Amen? You've got to know what, you've got to have it planned out, man, I'm telling you what. Because that's the first thing the enemy wants you to do. He'll let you bust open doors. You have no plan, no, no you know, action of uh, uh, what, what you're going to do next. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That's why he doesn't mind when these, these folks build every church on every corner. No spirit in them. Barely open the Bible. He doesn't matter. He doesn't build all those churches you want. Listen, we've talked about this. I'd rather have a hand of, of, full of 12 dynamic, strong people than 20,000 people in a church that were just wavering, that were off the path. How did the whole world get changed? By one man sowing into 12 men and then turning it into the 70 and multiplying it in such. You know what I'm saying? Listen, this core group right here, this group is world changers. It's going to change the world. Amen? It's going to turn the city upside down. Hallelujah! Do you think I would uproot my entire family and come down here just because it's 85 degrees? <laughs> Honey, I, you know I wouldn't. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. It, I don't care what the climate is. I don't care how the atmosphere is as far as the natural atmosphere. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you what. We are building a spiritual atmosphere that will destroy the darkness of this city. Hallelujah. When you stay on the path of God, listen, that, those things won't even, they, they won't hinder you. Was Jesus ever tempted? Of course, he was tempted. You know, he, his father approves him, baptizes him in the Holy Spirit, approves him. Holy Spirit says, okay, now go in the desert. Really? <laughs> Thank you for that going away gift. <laughs> and he goes out in the desert and what's he? He gets tempted. Did he waver? No. No. Did he ever have his own idea of how to do things? Did he ever have his own will to do something else? Sure he did. In the garden. He said, if there's any other way, you can pass this cup on her. Get, come on. He was all man. 100%. Did he falter? No. Listen. You may get enticed you may get challenged. 
to waver off the path. But you don't have to be accept, uh, acceptable to that. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to fall into that. Jesus did. Well, he was Jesus. He was all man. He did it because it had to be done. Your destiny has to be done. It's a choice that you choose to fill it up, to follow it, to run that path. What Adam and Eve did in the garden, Jesus had to do it in the garden again. Remember their temptation? They wavered. Eve was tempted. She fell for it. Then Jesus had to come back in the garden. In the garden. What started in the garden ended in the garden. That, tempt that, that scenario for us with Jesus was an example that we can do it. When temptation comes your way, you don't have to bite on it. You don't have to accept it. Amen? Hallelujah. You in James, the book of James, first chapter, 12th verse. It says, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Endures. That's not faltering, right? When you endure. Okay. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Let's back up to verse 12 again, where it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. You know, endures means you resist, means you persevere, you don't give in. Say this, I don't give in. I'm going to persevere, and I'm going to resist all the temptations that will get me off the path. See, that's where it is. You have to believe that you can do it, and you can. One of the, one of the, this, that, that very verse in another translation says, Blessed, happy, to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation. Another version says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. And the third version I'm going to share with you here says, The man who does not give up when tests come is happy. When you don't give up, when those tests come, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to come out happy. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> you're going to be happy. Don't give up. People get off the path, but you're not one of them. Amen? In fact, I just proclaim this over your life, that you're going to be able to draw people that are off the path back onto the path. That you're going to see, God's going to show you people that are off the path, and you're going to help draw them back onto the path. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Got some soul winners in here? Yeah, got a bunch of wise people in here. That's not our wisdom, that's God's wisdom. He's imparted into us. But I see it. There's going to be people that, that, are, that are hurting. That God's just going to show them to you and you're going to be able to draw them back onto the path. Back onto their path towards victory. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, if you go on down into James and... Right now we're at verse 14. It says, But each one is tempted when he draws away by his own desires and enticed. It's not somebody else's desires. It's your own desire. Own desires. There's a lot of things that, that, that can tempt you to get you off the path. They don't all have to be bad things. You know what I'm saying? Anybody like cars? 
Come on. All the guys. <laughs> cool. You know, there was a time in my life, man, my wife could test to this, that about every four years I just needed to trade the car, you know? Get a new car. Why? Because I, I saw a nice car and I just thought it should come home with me. <laughs> but you know what? I wasn't seeking the Lord on it because I had a desire. I had my own desire. What was, was it bad to get a new car? No, it was good to get a new car. But it was my own desire. Did those own desires turn out bad? Yeah, they did. Did God make it good? Yeah, he did. Because I began to realize that those were my desires were getting in the way of God's desires for my life. One time, um, I was, when I was younger, I raced dirt bikes. And uh, started racing dirt bikes at about 12 years of age. Started riding dirt bikes when I was about 8. Um, raced all the way through my teens and you know, that was just what I did. I, I had fun doing that. Anybody else raced dirt bikes, motocross, anything like that? Anyway, so here I am, about 30 years of age, and maybe, yeah, about 30 years of age, and my wife says, what would you like for your birthday, honey? And she'd always ask me this, and, and one year it was a guitar I got, and she said, really? I'd never played guitar in front of her up to that point. Now I want a dirt bike, you know? And she's like, a dirt bike? I'm like, yeah, I want a dirt bike, man. I want to race again, you know? Got, I was, I was 32 because I had two kids and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So here I am. This desire, it was just a good, clean desire, you know, to ride dirt bike again. And the dirt bike was only X amount of dollars, but I didn't tell my wife that all of the stuff that you had to get with it. <laughs> Lee knows what I'm talking about. Come on. You know, like the man that likes to golf? I just need golf clubs, honey. But then I need new shoes, and I need, you know. So all, all of these things were added unto that. And, uh, and here I am, like a fool, got two kids. I'm not in church, because races are on Sundays, you know. This church would have been great. <laughs> Where were you guys? Cross church, hallelujah. <laughs> but here I am on Sundays, my, I'm, I'm not taking my family to church, and you know, I'm, I'm neglecting my family. Here I am, man, out, out in the, I, I wasn't doing motocross anymore, because that was, that's a young guy's sport, so I was doing hair scrambles. Anybody know what that is? Hair scrambles, you go through woods, and I mean, you're going through creeks, and you're hitting logs, and and, I mean, trees and all kinds. I had to get special things for my handlebars to go around so my, my knuckles didn't get broke, you know what I mean? Because you'd hit trees and stuff like that. And so I'm flying through these woods, and, man, I'm, I'm doing pretty good, and the young guys are flying by me, but I'm still having fun. Hallelujah. And uh, all of a sudden, I, I went down this thing, and I hit this tree, and I just completely knocked myself over. Nobody else was around, and all I could hear was, uh, 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 uh. Uh, my echo of pain. <laughs> you get it? I hit the ground, I could just echo, echo, echo. And I'm like, what am I doing? And God said, that's right, what are you doing? <laughs> I, I've been trying to get your attention now for about a year and a half or so. Um, but you've been too consumed with your own desire. Hmm. That resonated a little bit, huh? See, we have some things that we like to do. But that might not be the thing that God wants us to do as we go down the path. I'm not saying they might not be down there later, but I'm telling you, maybe it's not for right now. See, there's a season for everything. And there's a season for victory at Sarasota. We're in a transitional season right now. 
And God wants us to stay on the path. But in order for us to stay on the path, we got to do what God's called us to do. We got to hear from God. What's He saying? Where's He leading us? Where's He directing us? What does He want us to do? Listen, we will not jump into anything until we hear the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I love Kenneth Hagin. I remember him saying one time, he said, it, I was listening to a, a, a tape, that's how long ago it was, a tape, cassette tape. Anybody know what those are? <laughs> a, a tape, and um, he said, you know, he had, he had a board meeting, and they were going to expand their parking lot, and he, he spoke up, and he said, you know, the Lord has given me a vision for a larger parking lot, and so on and so forth. The next meeting they had, they came back and said, well, what, what about that, that vision of the parking lot? He goes, the Lord hasn't given it anymore. That's all he's given me. Next time they come back, a year later, what about that vision for the parking lot? This doesn't give me anymore. Listen, they went ahead and got the parking lot years later. But this is what I'm saying. Until you hear from God, you don't move from where you're at. You stay planted, rooted, and grounded in doing the last thing that he's called you to do. Amen. You don't move on. You stay. You stay planted. You stay walking the path. You stay on the path of righteousness because it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. And as that light illuminates the path for you, you will see the vision that God has planned for your life. And we will see the plan and the vision that God has for victory at Sarasota. Amen. But the light, it's got to get brighter. It's got to get brighter. The light has to get brighter. I just want to, I want to begin to close with this. Because we talked about how, how not to. <laughs> we talked about our own desires. I just want to add this quote. And I love this quote. And it's by, by Bono. It says, stop asking God to bless what you're doing. Find out what God's doing. It's already blessed. Our good friend Bono. <laughs> Listen, why are we always asking God to bless what we're doing? Why don't we seek the Lord and ask him what he wants us to do? Because that's what's already blessed. Who wants to be on the blessed path? Amen. Not the path of struggles, but the path, the path of blessings. Hallelujah. There's abundance in blessings when you're on that path. Anybody for that? Yes. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't want to struggle. I want, I, want to, I want to do some fun things. I want to do some exciting things. Amen? I want to see people's lives changed. I want to see people that are in the miry clay, that we can pull them out of the miry clay, and they, and they, they, they come into the church, which is the hospital, but you know what? They don't stay that way. Because they get healed in God's hospital. Amen? Whole and well and, and delivered from all the junk that they've been through. And I know sometimes that's a process, of, but we love on them in that direction. Amen? You guys got some, some great things. Sozo, I mean, all of these things. I'm excited about, about getting into that, man. All, all these things. Thank you for, for making the path for me. Hallelujah. I appreciate that. Praise God you didn't get off the path. I, I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably have to go further north or something. <laughs> so how do we stay on the path? Well, I tell you what, I, I, I mean, I, I could tell you a lot of ways, and, and you know. But, but what, one of the, the best ways that I can tell you is what I heard today at the, the celebration service. And, and Jacob's wife, Jonna, shared it. She said that, that she was with Peggy and Peggy mentored her. She, Peggy mentored a lot of the younger women. And, and Peggy was, you know, teaching and, and so on and so forth. And, and she said, she made this comment, Peggy did. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just stuck in the Gospels. I'm stuck in the Gospels. Because all it does is, is look at Jesus. It focuses on Jesus. Our example, our hero. Jesus is my hero. He's my example. 
Because without him, I wouldn't be here. Without him, none of this would be here. He's already walked the path for us. Why do we have to take detour routes and go this way and go that way? We stay on the path that he's, he's planned for us. We focus on him. We stay, we stay looking upon Jesus. Turn with me in your Bibles and we'll finish with this. And I want you to prepare your hearts because I want to, I felt God imparting this into me too right before I left the room tonight that I want to I lay hands on those who would like to have hands laid upon them. As we have imparted the word, as God has used me to impart the word, I'm going to tell you what, there's an impartation of laying on of hands too. And maybe you're in here tonight and you say, man, this, this is right where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm struggling. I need to stay on this path. I'm going to tell you, God wants you on the path. He's not making it hard for you. Let me say that again. God's not making staying on the path hard for you. I mean, listen, you remember when you were born again the very first time? Man, he, he cradled you and he, he took you for a while, didn't he? He carried you. You remember, man, you see born again. People, they just get born again. They just accept Christ. Man, things happen to them. Boom, 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 boom. God's miracles, his wonders, power is just, that's his, he's, he's, he's cradling them to, you know, see his glory and his presence. Loving on them, man. You know, when you have a baby, you don't expect them to drive the car, right? You don't expect them to push the cart. And that's Jesus. That's how he does us. You know, but, but, then, but then you begin to mature and you begin to grow up in the things of God. And you begin to learn the, the, the ways through, through his word and through, through times of fellowship and being around other people and sharing faith. And, and now, now you're more mature. See, see listen, you know, he, he wants it to be easy for us. His burden is light. It's easy. His ways are easy. He doesn't want the path to be hard for you. He's not trying to, it's not, he's not trying to make this thing hard. I, just, I thought I'd share that. It just really hit my heart. It's, it's an easy thing. Hebrews 12, are you there? Hebrews 12, please. We'll finish up. And I just want you to prepare your heart because we're going to shortly open up these altars. And if you just, I'm going to tell you what, if you want impartation for anything in your life, whatever you're going through, I just really believe that the presence of God is here tonight. I believe that God wants to do something in your life. Listen, we said in prayer that, that we want to walk in these doors one way and leave changed another way. Listen, this thing that we call church, which is so important, gathering as a body, the word says that we're to do it, it's not, it's not a game. It's not a place of performance. It's not showing off our, our abilities. It's about allowing God to use who he wants to use to impart into others. And then you impart into others and others. And so in order to have that effective, we got to leave here changed, right? An impartation of God upon our lives. Tonight's the night. Hallelujah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's finish with this though. Hebrews 12 verse 1 says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto... Looking unto... Jesus. Let's say that. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. He's already done it for us. It's done. This thing is easy. To stay on the path. Who's going to stay on the path? We all are.
In Jesus' name. Why don't you stand to your feet, please? Why don't you say this after me? I am the righteousness of Christ. I'm going to stay on the path. I'm not going to look to my right. I'm not going to look to my left. But I'm going to focus on Jesus. And I'm going to run the race with him on my side. We can do this. As a church, we can do this. As an individual, I can do this. I'm going to stay on the path. Because my life is important to him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? You've got to believe that your life is important to him. And every step that you take is important to him. And I'm going to tell you what, with that in mind, you will stay on the path. Amen? So what I want to do, I 